So we are ready to proceed. Let's go ahead and begin the meeting as usual with our we'll call to order and roll call. Committee member Ringel. Here. Committee member Rickard. <laughs> I'm gonna remember to unmute someday here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Committee member Seabach. Here. Vice Chair Darius. Here. Chairperson Borbeau. Here. All present. Very good. All right. Our next item is our consent calendar, which consists solely of the minutes of last week's finance committee meeting. Uh, does anybody have any comments or corrections for the minutes from last week? Okay. If not, uh, Amanda, do we have any members of the public online wishing to speak to this item? We do not. Okay. And uh, I see we have our usual member of the public as part of our Zoom meeting. Uh, Gregor, I assume you have no comments? No, I'll just be leaving you all. I've got to cheer the National Metal Water Commission uh, this afternoon at four. So I'll be here as long as I can. All right. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, okay, then. Uh, I'll, I think uh, a motion is in order for approval of the minutes, the consent calendar. I'll move to approve the minutes. Okay. We have a second. I'll, I'll second. second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think. Rochelle started saying that first. So we'll go with a motion by member DeRiz and a second by member Rickard. Can we do the roll call? Committee member Ringo. Yes. Committee member Rickard. Yes. Committee member Seabach. Yes. Vice Chair Darius. Yes. Chairperson Borbeau. Yes. Motion passes. Next is public comments. Again, this is for items not on the agenda that, but that are under the purview of the finance committee. Um, I don't. I assume we did not get anybody calling in in the last moment. And so, Gregor, do you have any comment? Okay, then we will close public comment, bring it back to the committee, and move to our business items, which we will turn that over to Jerry Rangel. Thank you very much. I will try to get this on the screen for viewing. Ah, do you see it? Yes. Okay, super. Okay, so today is our last finance committee meeting before um, the budget as a whole goes to the council on June 8th. So thank you all for sticking with us through this whole time and going through this. It's been a lot of detail. Um, today we are going to go over the second half of the general fund. So last week we went over um, public safety, police and fire, and public works, um, public works administration, public works operations, um, and parks, and then other, I think. So today we'll go through all of the other operational budgets um, and everything else in, in general fund. Plus we will also hit um, item two, those other funds that we hadn't hit yet, um, the streets department, the wastewater department and um, the community facilities district. So at the end of this um, item one general fund items, we will, um, also review the seven year projection. So we'll go ahead and get started. So first of all, we have the city council budget. Um, let's see, what do I need to call out on this? Um, we did move some of the items that used to be in city council to the um, new economic uh, and business development department. So we created a new department um, under kind of housed under uh, community development. And we moved some of those items um, like the micro grants uh, program that we ran, the um, chamber, some of those out of the council budget that used to be here and um, put those in that economic and business development uh, department that we'll see in a few minutes. Um, we also have our annual LAFCO contribution in here. Um, this houses the, um, the costs for publishing the, the city council meetings, put those online and, and get those recorded and all that. Um, this uh, includes the promotions piece that Terry runs. So um, there is a, a revenue component to kind of even these out so that they come 
at 200,000 or under. So we have those. And then we've also added that $60,000 uh, essentialism piece that we talked about in the, the list last week and then um, at the April 27th council meeting as well. Hey Jerry, what, what was the, um, what's the rationale for deciding what to include under the council budget and not include under the council budget? Uh, you know, you mentioned the, like the, the um, money we, we gave, um, you know, to COVID affected businesses, uh, but you mentioned a couple of specific programs that were previously under council. I'm just curious, um, what what's the rationale for saying, oh, well, let's try, call this, you know, un, under the council item of budget versus not. Um, Rochelle could probably answer this better than I, did you want to yeah. step in? Rochelle? Yeah, so a lot of stuff is historically that council said, hey, this is our program. This is what we want to do. We want to be kind of in charge of it and and take this on, um, particularly if it didn't clearly fall under, you know, police, fire, one of our existing departments. Uh, over time, they've been listed in uh, city council. Uh, the problem is, is when you do state controller reports and other things, a lot of this stuff, just for the ease of it, gets report at, reported as, you know, council expense and everybody's like whoa council has this big giant you know blow up where they spend on government bureaucracy when really it is things like promotions and the chamber and business support so this year because we had you know we added Lorelei and we had the micro grants and we had um, you know the chamber contract there's a lot of business development that's historically been in city council that we thought, okay, this would be cleaner for the public if we made it its own division under under the community development department. And so that's yeah. why we just pulled that stuff out. Well, and that is why I asked because I mean, maybe I'm, you know, um, <clears throat> channeling some defensiveness as a council member, but um, you know, I, I don't want it to be artificially low in the sense the council should, you know, pay for its relative overhead you know, computer maintenance, building, anything related to having an office, that sort of stuff. But on the other hand, as you just suggested, you know, having a five member council that makes $600 a month and suddenly it costs $600,000 a year, it's kind of a, there's a little bit of a logic leap there of going, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so in that sense, you know, I mean, the council directs all kinds of money. I mean, we put money yeah. on street trees and we put money on this and that and, um, you know, it seems that in my mind, uh, if, if it doesn't fit in another department, frankly, it probably should fall under the city manager. <laughs> which which I'm fine with. We've just had council members in the past that, oh, that's under our budget. And it's like, okay, realistically, it's it's all under exactly. under the city's purview. And, and hopefully your city manager is spending it where you guys want. So, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, to me, I mean, the entire city budget is the council's budget. So therefore, exactly. um, it, it, you know, the, I would hope that the council, you know, budget uh, section or whatever you call it, kind of reflects really the cost of having a city council. And, and that includes, you know, having participation in LAFCO or something like that. Any costs related to our membership and different things, League of Cities, that sort of stuff. So there's definitely some things that should be included in the council budget. But um, you those know, not things, things like that are related to having the council uh, meeting. So all of that community outreach is really, right. you know, that would be okay to leave here. Right. But, right. but maybe move promotions out to under city manager budget. Right. That would be my, uh, you know, kind of personal preference. Um, but if, but if you spend, you know, $200,000 to rearrange the city council chambers so we can have uh, better public access, well, that's, that's an expense related to having a city council that's accessible by the public. But having, you know, Terry and all she does, that's, you know, um, that's not really directly related to the cost of having a city council. Would you be okay just because of the very short turnaround to get the get this on the June 8th if we left it like this, but started yeah. tracking it and moved it? No problem. This is, you know, kind of a long-term uh, suggestion and maybe you, know, you may maybe mention it on June 8th or 
June 22nd or whatever, but yeah. just keep it in mind for uh, the future, if you, if you would. Will do. Well, let me uh, ask, Rochelle, you referred to the state controller's reports. Wouldn't it be a more supportable way to go is whatever the state controller, um, they don't mandate, I guess, or do they just suggest? They don't even suggest. They make you reshuffle the whole deck and just kind of break it out in a different way that's not necessarily very logical. So and doesn't go under span of control. So uh, yeah, the, the, the state controller's reports are a challenge. Well, I know <laughs> there are cities and some of the counties that jam everything into the city manager's budget and the, their their council or their board budget ends up being about 10 bucks or something. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. The way that looks. And even in LA County, they had a, I think it was two or three million dollar discretionary fund for every board member. Oh wow! And that was in the city, uh, the county administrator's budget, not their budget. Yeah, so they could spend it on anything they wanted, and they did, but it didn't even show up under their budget. So th those things can be pretty ugly when you when you start playing games with it. You know. I agree. I think yeah. promotions is directly under my purview and stuff. And so, you know, unless we make it its own division, which is also a possibility and Jerry and I to discuss that briefly, uh, you know, which may not be a bad idea in the future, uh, but and everything yeah, some, else. Yeah. Some have an economic development division of planning and building or something. That's, that's, that's what we that did. Goes. That's what we did this year. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and Jerry, I think what our county supervisors have like fifteen thousand dollars each or something. And... No, no, they were more than that. Okay. Maybe they cut it back in the the lean years here. Not in the L.A. Air, uh, or arena, though. I don't think. Because <laughs> no. um, <laughs> um, I know we occasionally different groups get you know five hundred bucks from Debbie Arnold or something like that. Um, okay, all right. Well, I, if nobody else has any further comment on that, are we do we have any questions regarding? the council uh, break, the cost of council. All right, then Jerry, are you ready to move on or are there any other points you wanted to make on uh, that? No, I think that's all for council. Um, next we have the city clerk's budget. So this, um, as you'll recall, um, our city clerk kind of serves two, two jobs. She's in um, Rochelle's uh, office as a deputy city manager. So her salary is there. And this is kind of those other items that um, are directly related to clerk. So we do have funds in there every other year for the, um, the election and on the off years, it's a smaller amount. And then just some other um, things necessary for the clerk. Um, I don't think there's anything particularly outstanding in this one, unless you have any questions on anything. Yeah, it looks like the contract services are not very much, but that they bounce around a little bit. Is that because of elections or? Um, I think that's because of the municipal code changes. So every time those change, we need to um, contract to get those uh, adjusted. All right, thank you. Um, next, we have uh, Mr. Seabock's budget. So, um, and this is a, a minimal, um, just has um, the employee services portion. And then uh, most of this here is just for uh, the um, trustee that holds our, our investments. Uh, Jerry in the past has gone on a couple of, of um, professional development type things. Those have kind of quieted down now with COVID. Um, but in those instances, when um, he's wanted to do that, we've moved some, some budget over from finance to make that possible. Jerry, did you have any comments on this one that you'd like to add? No, it's just the, the, the best expenditure of city money that there is. It's the, 
Well, we the certainly appreciate making activity. Is what it is. Yeah, we, we certainly appreciate how lean it is, Jerry. That um, <laughs> a quick question of Jerry, other Jerry Rangel. Um, on the front page, it says investment administration services on page E8, uh, and but but that's the grand total of all of the stuff. Because when I first saw that, I thought, oh, that's the you know what we paid um, you know to our to BNY or whoever, you know, working with to do different things. Yeah, that, that's kind of the program. So in the investment program, essentially. So you're right. So those particular items are broken out here in contract services. Right. Okay. I just thought it was an odd, interesting title for the total number. Um, so, okay. But yes, I think, Jerry, we're, we're getting a pretty good bang for the buck there uh, on, on your services. So, and, and I can tell from this, you're not taking... You're not taking much in the way of health benefits, so we appreciate that as well. No. <laughs> so, all, right. all right. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions on that? Okay. Next is uh, the city attorney. So let's see. Was it um, a couple of years ago, Rochelle? I can't recall how long ago it was. We went to a flat rate with the city attorney's office. So that was really helpful because that kind of helped control that budget. Um, this does include some additional types of, of services that we get. I think they're, are they described here? No. Um, um, sometimes we need special counsel for different things. So this is uh, both um, Burke, Sorensen, Burke William Sorensen and some additional outside services as well. And then there is a separate line item for the litigation and costs that were related to the Castle Rock case. Curious about that, Jerry, because you show $53,000 in 2019-20, um, but, you know, but only $6,500 this fiscal year. I thought you know, most of the court case was in this fiscal year, like in the fall, you know, October, November, that sort of thing. Um, that may, that was kind of where we were when we looked at it, um, billing wise. So we may need to adjust that somewhat for, I, I think that a lot of the preparation, um, occurred in 2019, 2020, because we were originally sc uh, scheduled to go to court in, uh, January, 2020. Um, and we did start in January, 2020, uh, and then uh, hit a bunch in June of uh, 2020. Uh, so there's a lot of it actually did occur in 2020 and we were only billed for those amounts that they could not fit within their, uh, within their regular retainer. So if our regular work was way down, then they didn't, then Brian didn't bill us for his extra time on Castle Rock. Right, got it. Okay, yeah, I kind of wondered if some of it was also pre us going to a flat rate or something, or if it involved outside assistance. So. Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. And we are expected to get a little bit of that back, not all of it, but a little bit. So a, a partial award of court costs to us as the victors? Yes. That? Okay, Yes. very good, thank you. So if you have something, uh, Rochelle, if you have something that comes up a case that the JPA insurance doesn't think they should cover, then you you make an, uh, you're going to have to add some money to city attorney probably. That is correct. Was that the case with this Castle Rock thing? That is exactly. Okay. So usually we go to council in closed session and and discuss some of that and whether to pursue litigation, settle, or uh, whatever the case may be. Are taking that on. Okay. Um, city manager's office is next. So this is both city manager and the human resources personnel um, functions. So um, let's see. Um, trying to think what all we have in here for um, 
We do have the grant writing piece that we talked about last week, um, hiring a consultant to do some grant writing and some look for some opportunities for us. We do have this opportunities fund for 70,000 one time money that the council talked about at their April 27th meeting. So that's available so that we can make uh, kind of swift moves as opportunities present themselves to solve problems in our community or to meet our priorities. And we do have this one uh, addition of one computer here for that shared position between the city manager's office and the IT division for the um, web up update social media person to update all of our web um, face and to um, have more transparency and updated information to the public. Okay. Hey, Cherry, on page E16 there, um, yeah, where you're breaking out the cost a little bit, the um, sal salaries, so between 21 and 22, Salaries went up 80,000 from 607 to 87, but benefits went up 170,000. You know, so you have a much higher ratio of benefits to salaries over that one year period. What, what caused that? See that? Um, so we discussed that briefly during closed session, Charles. Okay, but I mean, I. So, but the benefits themselves would, you know, benefits, insurance, and taxes would increase that much more than salaries? Um, tell you what, I'll talk to you next yeah, time in closed session. Next, sure. Okay. That's, that's okay. I just want to make sure, I mean, those kind of differentials jump out at me. Yeah. Um, I hear you. You know, uh, in terms of, okay, salaries up, you know, 12% benefits up. 50%. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. What's that about? Okay. All right. There's a Very distortion good. in there right now. Okay. That's, that's fine. If it's something related to closed session, yeah. uh, that's fine. Okay. Um, anything else you want to point Michelle, out? Do you recall anything else I need to point out in this? No. And I, I would, I would point out that, you know, we give you a hundred thousand dollars citywide contingency and you only use $5,000 of it this year. Yeah. That's pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're not going to jinx us. There's still six weeks left. I can have yeah, a right. fire truck, you know, yeah. blown engine or something. Right. Right. Very good. I think that stuff, those shows, because I think a lot of organizations, you know, they would spend 99000 of that 100 for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's good. All right. Okay, moving on to uh, my department. So finance, um, let's see, what did we add in here? Um, we added a little bit of money to continue the development impact fee. So we hope to get that back to council very soon. And we do have this one item we talked about um, again last week for the uh, CCCSIF supplemental insurance that stands for the Central Coast. Oh gosh, now I lost one of the C's. California Central Coast? No. I don't the, know. Yeah. Anyways, it was our um, pool for workers' comp before we join CGPIA. And so we just need to um, make some payments for some expected claims there. And then we have the, um, the item for the credit card acceptance program that we're trying to get working for um, community development area, police, all those. So it, it's gonna cost 40,000 to set up our ability to accept credit card payments? Right, right. Okay, what is that primarily for? I mean, 40,000. So that's our best estimate now. We will bring that back to council because I'm sure we'll have to figure out, you know, how do we divide up the credit card fees between what the city wants to um, or is able to, to pay for and what uh, service fees would be passed along to the consumer. So that'll be kind of a package deal we'll bring back to council once we've um, been able to kind of get through that and find the best vendor for that works with track it and all that. There's and a lot. Jerry, 
I'm sorry, go ahead. There's a lot of details on that because you know some of the companies they want to um, run them and then they want to have a, a hand in your your bank account and just be able to pull out their fees and we're you know not comfortable with that idea. So trying to get the right mix and the right um, vendor is really key for us. Got it. On the, on the thing, the CCCSIF, you know, our insurance carrier prior to CJPIA, um, how long, you know, should we expect those kinds of supplemental payment payments? I assume that's to, you know, close out open cases relative to that existed prior to CJPIA. How long... Um, should we anticipate continuing to have to make payments to them or is that just totally unknown? Could be a year, could be 10 years from now, or could be nothing for five years and then something pops up. How's that going to work out? This is a little bit of a catch up and Rochelle, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. This is a little bit of a catch up and kind of projects into next year as well and what they think that the payments will be. We have closed out a couple of claims. There are a couple of claims that um, seem like they won't be closed out for some time. Um, in some events, if we have, um, this is also managed by CJPAA, so in some events, if we have a, um, a retro that is positive, we can put it against this. So we haven't needed to, to get these big contributions lately, um, but some big items did come through. So hopefully we won't have it again, but we could. I, and just to, this is workers' comp, correct, Jerry? Right. So um, if, if a police officer we had in 1980 had a heart attack, um, you're going to be paying him for the rest of his, his life uh, for the medication and, and service and stuff because, as we all know, uh, that's presumptive that it's workers' comp up at the state. Um, and so the 157,380 is what they estimate through the close of claims but sometimes the experience that they have, you know, on what's actually happening can be higher or lower than that. Um, and then that's when they have to do an adjustment. Five years ago, they thought we were positive. It's kind of been uh, eating that down. And so, but this should be one lump that hopefully gets us through the rest of everybody's life uh, that had those claims and we're done. But I would imagine there's gonna be some, some other adjustments along the way, just not huge like this. So, because my assumption had been that since we're under CJPIA, this would only involve old cases. Correct. Based on your explanation, though, if I worked for a Tascadero in the 80s and Paso Robles in the 90s, now I'm 70 years old, long retired, and I have something that's considered presumptively related to the job, that could result in a claim, a retroactive claim against us. It, it could, and it but I think the majority of these were actually ones where they'll post the claim date back to uh, their claims that we knew about. It's just that the experience is different than we expected. So those uh, doctor's appointments, that medication, all of that is more expensive uh, for the ongoing care of that claim uh, because it, it follows the employee through the rest of their life uh, hmm. than we anticipated. Are there circumstances where it's where it's uh, a shared responsibility between you know they worked for us at a certain point in time they worked for somebody else at a certain point in time? Um, yes. You know, is it sometimes shared, sort of like a purse liability, or is it? Um, yes, okay. there are cases like that too. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. So, hey guys, it's Jeff. <laughs> I've got one question going back to the credit card. I just couldn't find a time to interact with you. Um, there's a company called Court or Court Buddy, Commission Buddy. I would highly recommend that you folks look into that. I've looked in, I've switched to them. I'm saving so much credit card money. It is insane over the banks. And they give you a commission back for taking a credit card. So, and they're a local company out of San Luis. Um, my numbers have exceeded last year's numbers and credit cards, and I have paid about 50% less in fees. Oh, fantastic. Could you repeat the name of that, please, Jeff? It's called Commission Buddies. 
Okay. And I will forward you the information uh, later this afternoon. Super, thank you. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, and Charles, more on that. The original 40,000 set up a lot of that software so it integrates seamlessly with our cash receding and other software programs. Uh, and you're, you're not doing double entry and those types of things too. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I know that's a big issue on some of that. We're avoiding doing, having to re-enter everything, you know, manually re-enter what you got off credit cards. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. So I think we're done and ready to do community development unless anybody has any other questions or comments. Okay. All right, as you say, community development is next. Um, let's see. What do I need to point out here? Um, we do have the um, that SB2 planning grant coming through. So that will be, um, that's being worked on now, trying to process that. And we have the general plan update plugged in here. So we had discussed uh, with council on private previous um, meetings using general fund reserve for those. So we plugged those in, assuming that we're using that um, general fund reserves as we talked about. We also have this $10,000 here again that we talked about on that list that um, is going towards electronic plan review equipment. So a, a big kind of a computer and, and information so that we can um, process uh, electronic plans and get that more streamlined in the community development department. Um, if that works well, we'll expand it out to public works as well. Hey, I, just, I have a question that you guys, it's probably more of a fill question, so you may not be able to answer it. Um, but we, on the workload, performance workload measurements, we had like permit near the bottom of E55, permit center customers, 7,000 budgeted, 2,500 is the new, you know, estimated, um, and which is, you know, more consistent going out. Um, and, and I think all these numbers kind of reveal how difficult it is to accurately, accurately estimate um, building and planning activity. <laughs> Do we have any idea why we estimated 7,000 permit center customers when that, you know, would have exceeded our previous experience by a factor of five? Right. I think, um, well, one, Phil has taken another look at these just to make sure that they make sense and that they're really kind of um, what we're gearing up for in the next two years. I think that one was... Um, was because there was so much activity happening two years ago at this time and they were really um, expecting a lot, of, a lot of activity coming through. So I think um, they had high hopes to, to really process a lot of stuff. So uh, I think Bill would be able to answer better than that, but I expect that that's right. probably about the response. All right, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, do you have any other questions on this section? Well, let's see. Let me look through each of the pages here. Um, looking for any other things. Um, um, no, I'm... And at, at this point in time, I mean, we hope to get more grants for general plan update, but right now the source of funds you know, is for those two large amounts, the 450, the 635 here. Right, right now that source is general fund. Right, right. And hopefully we can offset those with grants. But for now we wanted to at least plug in those so that we could get started on the general plan. Right. I, I have one that seems odd. The <clears throat> per, uh, recruitment costs. Now, is that double budgeted by accident there? I noticed 15.7 for professional development and 15.7 for recruitment in the 2021 year. That sounds like a lot for recruitment, even if it's the department head or something. Oh, uh, you know, I think what happened here um, initially when the council um, agreed to use some of the SB 1090 funds to hire um, a 
uh, Lorelei effectively, um, um, economic development person. The council allocated 15,000 that was supposed to be for her salaries for, um, for, this, for these couple of months in this current fiscal year. Um, and we had a, a, a budget entry that actually hit recruitment and community development and error and we must not have just pulled that out. We've done a correction in our system, but it must not have um, come through on this worksheet. Yeah. So that should probably be 700 in actuality. Okay. Okay, good question. Okay. So bus passes are sold by community development, huh? Is that because they handle reception? Yes, central reception handles those. Okay. All right. So central reception is the next department, which it's sometimes kind of bleeds between those two, sometimes more than we expect it to. So <laughs> that's probably why bus passes were in that section. Um, I don't think we changed a whole lot in a central reception. We did add um, some money for some new computers. So uh, a kiosk for um, the community in the lobby there, and then another um, computer in the central reception area so that we can have two part-time individuals who would sometimes overlap and then another printer and a scanner in that area as well. What is, in terms of the workload things, what is transient coordination? How do you know? Uh, we list yeah. that as a workload measurement called transient coordination. <laughs> Coordinating your transients. <laughs> well, if, if only we could, Jerry. <laughs> um, I I don't know. We should probably eliminate that line. Thank you. Good catch. Well, I was just wondering why it went down so much from eighteen nineteen to nineteen twenty. <laughs> Better behave, transients. Yeah, I guess. Better coordinated. Board of coordinated transients. Better coordinated. Yes. All right. Um, okay. Uh, anybody have any other questions or comments regarding this? We will go ahead and move on. And please excuse our page numbers. We haven't adjusted the page numbers, so you'll see the page numbers E1, and it's not really, but we will fix that after today. Um, so this is the new division that we um, kind of established that we talked about with City Council, Economic and Business Development. It does have the salary piece in here for Lorelei. Um, and then some of those components we talked about, the Chamber of Commerce, Business Development, that type of thing. This also is where we have the BridgeWorks expansion project. Um, the micro grant program that we did, and just uh, a little bit of office furniture for the, the new position. Um, let's see. When we allocated her position, we also allocated some replacement uh, money for replacement computers and the occupancy piece. So, any questions here? Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to recreation. Now recreation was hit pretty hard um, during the current year. So expenses and revenues are both down. We were able to get a couple of uh, programs in um, in 1920 and then we've done a couple um, like youth sports types things um, earlier in the year when we were able to kind of do those outdoor items. Um, and now we're being able to start back up again. So we're kind of ramping up back to normal um, as we kind of go out and expect by 22-23, we should be more back to normal. I think we talked about this on the, the revenue section. But you will see some um, definite drops in the, uh, the costs here for the current fiscal year 2021. Do you have any um, questions on this section? No, it'll, be, it'll just be very interesting to see as things are more fully opened up, how quickly, um, you know, numbers return to normal in terms of 
participation. Uh, you know, they, who knows, they might even come back and exceed prior levels of participation, but it'll be interesting to see how the public responds to the reopening of all of our recreational activities. Definitely. All right, our next department is the pavilion on the lake. So same um, here, these costs didn't go down quite as much because we still have a building to run and all that. So there are costs associated with that. Um, but um, let's see, definitely um, not as much activity as we normally would have seen and definitely lower revenue in the pavilion. We did allocate some funding to do some repairs over there, um, buy some new tables and chairs and, and um, fix that folding wall that's in the middle of the room. So some of those things will get spruced up over there. So um, Patty's really looking forward to, to getting those items cleaned up. Yeah. Did, somebody, did somebody break the folding wall? They, they're just old, they've been, you know, kind of showing their wear and not working quite as effectively. And we just don't want it to become a safety issue. And what is, uh, Rochelle, the latest on reopening the pavilion to rentals like weddings and that sort of thing? It, it is open under the orange tier guidelines. Um, so they are, we've had some May brides already. Uh, really? Certainly okay. it's, it's not exactly what they planned and, and all of their guests to get more people in have to uh, certify that they're either fully vaccinated or be tested, but uh, you can do, you can have gatherings without that, with, uh, without doing that, but it's con considerably less people. So. There's limited capacity unless you demonstrate, you know, vaccine, vaccinated or yes. negative test. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Thank you. Okay, our next department is the zoo. So as we had discussed last week, we had added a little bit of funds um, into some of the operating activities, um, animal food, electricity, some of those sorts of things for the zoo, just because um, you know we had not really added anything for years and years and years um, to this budget. So it's really kind of a catch up on some of those items and like the animal costs, animal food costs that are just continuing to increase. Um, we did see pretty significant activity in the gift shop um, and uh, during the times when the zoo was able to be open, there was a lot of people and they were buying a lot of, a lot of souvenirs and things. So, um, so we're excited about that. At least it kind of caught up a little bit on some of that uh, loss that we had while we were closed. Hey, Jerry. Yes. On the estimated 2021, could you take a peek at those numbers? Because um, they appear very low to me. So I just want to make sure that we're prepared for whatever comes through. Yeah. Yes. Um. The, um, you know, because this is a general fund expenditure budget, uh, so within a department, this does not reflect any departmental revenue, departmental related revenue. Um, and so when we look at the total uh, going, so let's say this year, you know, 1.135 to next year up 200,000 to one, you know, 333, um, and then pretty level in the subsequent year. Um, of course, I you know this is a bad year for projecting zoo revenue because you still have lingering effects of, of COVID. But if you go back to previous years, there's you know revenue plus five percent or something. What would that leave us with as an operating deficit for the um, for the zoo? For our years, you mean? Well, yeah. I mean, if you look at the our let's say our budget for next year of $1.333 million and you took our revenue of two years ago and added five or 10% uh, or you know, whatever normal trend line for re in revenue increase would be, uh, what was our revenue two years ago, you know, pre-pandemic? A minute to look that up. And honestly, we did a, a fairly significant 
uh, admission fee increase last year. Right. So I don't know if looking, I mean, I think it was 40 or 50%. So I don't know if looking at two years ago and, and applying will be your best bet, but let's start there. Just trying to look at the ballpark in terms of, you know, yeah. what was, you know, a, a few years ago, if we were spending a million and we were making 400, then our deficit was 600. Um, and you're right, it's hard to project because you, you wonder, okay, you raise prices, are, are you gonna lose attendance or not? And um, I think we initially were seeing we were not really losing attendance, if I recall correctly. But always just want to keep in mind or keep in our mind um, what you know what our operating deficit at the zoo is. Yeah. So well, I need to add those up. Am I am are, are my ballpark figures from the past correct though in terms of like spending a million and and taking in about four hundred? I think that's about what I recall. Um, on your page B eleven, it's looking more closer to a half a million revenue, which makes sense because we had those fee increases. Yeah. Got it. And wasn't that one of the things that was the survey said for the D21 election that that was one that people voted for because they, they liked the zoo? They, they wanted to keep the zoo at a, a $500,000 deficit, which is what we were projecting based on the last budget. Um, but certainly these, these cost increases um, you know, I would imagine increase that even further. Right. So projected revenue for the zoo is about four seventy five. Did that include the donations? Um, anyway, it's around a half a million dollars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I want to know. But I mean, that would, if it were a half million, that would put us in the neighborhood of running an eight hundred thousand dollar. Yeah. With yep. this, yep. Which I think, just think, I mean, we, you know, council needs to be aware of that. Um, and, you know, the public is, as well needs to understand that. So, yeah, okay. absolutely. All righty. Cause yeah, it, it's a, you know, legit concern about our ability to sustain that kind of thing. So, okay. Got it. All right. We will move on to the, Colony Park Community Center. So similar to the pavilion on this one, um, we didn't have the activities, but we still have the building that we needed to maintain and everything like that. So um, not um, so many fun things to do, but still the costs. So we did um, project that we would be trying to uh, replace the shade sails that are outside. So. This includes funding not just for the shade sail material, but also to adjust the, um, the poles that they're on are, uh, I think they're a little too short. So we need to do something to um, increase the height on that. So this uh, includes mm -hmm. that whole activity there. Um, so, otherwise, not a whole lot of changes in this department. Right, but I, I'm actually um, kind of surprised that the, the employee service cost here is only 55k this um, is just for wages so the um the full-time recreation staff that we have are under the recreation division their salary okay. piece and this is just okay. part-time staff this is just part okay got it thank you mm -hmm. okay um, so that is the rest of the departments. I wanted to walk you through the seven year projection. Um, I wanna just um, point out to you real quick and not have you get um, heart palpitations. This number here, this 1.9 um, projected net loss for the 21-22. So I do have this other worksheet that we kind of um, looked at to kind of figure out what should the target um, 
net income be? So we took the current year and said if we had a, a zero, you know, a balance budget, we came up to zero. We backed out those items which we've already received funding for for 1090 that are allocated by council. So um, the employee that we hired here, and then the 125 for the big bridge works expansion, and then. Um, factoring in D20 funds. So this is the D20 section. Our projected revenue is 1.285. Our projected expenses for the current fiscal year from now until June 30th are at um, 826, which leaves us with an excess 458 essentially in the current year. So as of June 30th. So if that piece comes back up here, and um, nets against these two, we would expect that our target would be somewhere in the 320 range. And this is really just a kind of a, um, a gut check just to make sure that we're kind of in the right range and you know, kind of following along what we expect to, the numbers to be. Based on our seven year projection that you have here in your staff report, our expected um, net income for the current year is 371,000. So that is um, not this number right here. I will need to adjust that. Um, and then that would flow down here. And then so similarly with next year, so we would use that 458,000 in D20 funds that you see down here in the detail. We would also be rolling over some um, purchases or items that we allocated for spending in 2021 that we won't be able to spend by the end of the fiscal year. Those will, that money will be left in the general fund reserve. So we'll be kind of using that next year. And then the general uh, plan update that we talked about using general fund money for. So that gets you pretty close to where our um, projected um, net losses for 21, 22, but you see it kind of offsets with the other year and then a net of zero in 22, 23, and then a little bit of income in the years after that. So kind of just to understand what the effect of the rollover, what the effect of the D20 is, where we're really targeting for um, reasonable expenditures. Um, oh yeah, the good thing is we're showing positives out in, in all of the out years, you know, 23, 24 and beyond. Right. Even before these adjustments you're referring to. And we are keeping our uh, fund balance as a percentage of expenditures above the 20% minimum too, so. That's a healthy reserve as well. Yeah, what were you figuring for your PERS increases? You, you cranking those in over the next three years still? Right, right. So we do have some projections from PERS that we're using for those. So that's all built into um, to the numbers we have for employee services and as well as increase for health insurance and that type of stuff. Of course, those PERS estimates are almost always understated, so that you know they are, they you know they there are various reasons that they end up being more than they anticipate. But uh, you know, I mean, you can only use the information you have from them um, at the time. But from a planning perspective, they always tend to end up costing more down the road. Well, in the, and, count, the county pension plan, we voted just last Monday to ratchet up the rates another about a percent on the employees and a percent on the county, even though we had good investment returns last year, just because um, there's no, nobody thinks you can continue earning 8%, which was some of the funds were estimating an 8% net return and we'd already ratcheted down quite a bit, but we need to keep ratcheting that down. And PERS is doing the same thing. Jerry, does the, the county have a single expected rate of return or do you have multiple expected rates of return? 
Uh, we uh, we had normally adjust it every other year with it. Uh, we have an experience study. We look at all the actuarial uh, experience, and sometimes we have gains uh, in some things. But the investment return is the biggest, the most impactful number. And there's just no turning it away. I mean, it's it's just no pretending that the stock market is going to keep doing what it's been doing and that the interest rates will be rebounding and there will be no inflation. I mean, you can put on the rose colored glasses, but nobody really believes all of that will happen. Yeah. Right. Um, And just one more thing on this page. Uh, We changed it to available fund balance instead of, uh, or available balance instead of fund balance. Um, there are some things in our fund balance where we're not expecting to see those funds for a really long time, if at all. Um, and so we thought when looking at a percentage of, uh, as a percentage of expenses, uh, it makes a lot more sense to look at what actually you can lay your hands on rather than, than your net fund balance. So uh, that's back to available fund balance. I think it switched back and forth a couple of years ago. Um, right. one, other, one other question, I'm sorry, on, on the, the big picture on the revenue side, I, at the council meeting a couple nights ago, uh, you were happy to hear that the Senate passed your bill on the uh, <clears throat> uh, redevelopment, yeah. uh, but you still hasn't passed the assembly, so I was wondering um, is that been figured into the future here yet? You will take care of that if it passes, the assembly gets signed by the governor. Yeah, that would come through on that decrease increase in interfund loans uh, balance. Uh, it's technically an advance receivable to the successor agency. So, uh, but we're not projecting, we're not banking on it, passing the assembly. We're certainly hopeful and going to work really, really hard to, to make that happen. But will that the effect of that be a one year pop or will it be spread out over the next 20 years or so? Uh, we have a proposal in for it to be paid off over seven years. It really depends on what the legislation says. Okay. And Jerry, we're just carrying it as a receivable right now. So it's a question of, you know, validating the legitimacy of the receivable as opposed to writing off the receivable. So it's not exactly revenue. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it would be good news for the city if that passes, that's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think it's very good to go with the available because you don't want to count restricted funds or anything that's, you know, uh, questionable availability when you're looking at what percentage of our general fund do we have in available reserves. Anybody have any other questions on this, on the seven year summary? Cause that, I always, you know, that's the one page I like to, if I carry any page around with me, that's the one I'm really interested in, so. All right. Um, that concludes item one of the agenda. I don't know if we need to do anything particular, if you would like um, to. Well, to. let's just double check with Amanda that nobody's called in, uh, see if, Anybody has any further comment on, since that was a specific item, does anybody have any comment? We, Can we I just, lost a member of the public and we gained a member of the public, so. <laughs> Can I uh, make one comment? Sure. I think when you had talked about the uh, benefit rate in the city manager's uh, department, mm-hmm. and I said it had to do with closed session, I do want to make it clear, it had nothing to do with the closed session item related to city manager evaluation or anything like that, uh, but more uh, related to negotiations as a whole uh, and uh, having the ability to adjust some things and some money put there as we try and refine that. Right. All righty. Thank you. It is Jeff Boslin. As a member of the community, I appreciate that explanation because I was going to ask that. Uh, <laughs> and then my my other comment to all of this is when people want to gripe about budget and not having their two cents, maybe they should get on a public meeting that you offer and do it. So uh, I think things are looking really good. Um, 
all the way through. And uh, I think Jerry's done a phenomenal job. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Okay, so I think we're ready to move on to the um, the next agenda item, which is uh, covering some of these funds that we didn't uh, go over in our previous, or where we weren't able to complete in some of our previous meetings. Right, yes, we have three funds. So the gas tax funds, which is our streets department, wastewater, and the community facilities district. Mm -hmm. So uh, gas tax funds, uh, gas tax revenues have been um, down lately. Um, and so once upon a time, they used to pay for all of the, the costs of the department to um, run our, our streets crew and do everything that they do. It no longer does. So down here at the bottom, you see this contribution from the general fund. So we are looking to put about 400,453 away um, to toward um, services for the, the streets department just to kind of make ends meet um, with, um, with the activity that they do there. Um, this is also where we receive our SB1 road money. So it comes into this department and then it is later transferred out to the, um, uh, oh, it's on a, yeah, so another page. Yeah. So Jerry, on that page, I'm looking at C9, um, and we have other cash sources uses, and we say increase slash decrease in SB1 funds. Um, I'm a little confused about the numbers jumping around. Is that, you know, from small positive, which I guess is actually a, a decrease, to big negative, which in parentheses, I guess, means an increase, you know, so we're going 28, 526, 75, 415, 985. Um, so can you explain why that jumps around so much? Because I thought sure, absolutely. You know, it was going to be fairly consistent amount, although perhaps not as much as we originally anticipated. So the SB1 money is somewhere in that five to six hundred dollar uh thousand dollar range a year we keep it in this fund and when the um the uh the projects are um in the um ltf fund so um when the projects are being worked on and completed then we move money sb1 money out of this department into or the, this fund into that fund as needed to cover the expenses so that uh, these are the, the different projects, the El Camino North, South, and then Traffic Way North. And so these are the funds that we expect to move out based on the level of activity that's happening with those projects in the LTF fund. So, um, which is why there's this um, balance here at the bottom of mm -hmm. LTF money, or I'm um, sorry, SB1 money. Okay, got it. Oh, this one. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I, have, I have a question on, on this page right here. Just, just yes. curious, is the, the a pretty significant increase of 218 to 406. I'm just curious why. Um, Down to bond, the, the transfer from general funds, yeah. Um, well, um, sometimes our expenses come in lower than we uh, expect, and so we only move over from the general fund enough to really cover the minimum. So this, I think, was budgeted a little bit higher, but then the expenses came in lower. Sometimes um, we have a shortage of staffing or we're not able to get to all of our, our projects. I think we have some money built in there for street striping we're not always able to get to that because of limited staffing. Um, sometimes staff is out, you know, on, on, on workers' comp and things like that. So there's not enough staff to get that done. So sometimes um, if we look at the expense, we'll probably be able to I think see. you also look at the revenue. If the revenue doesn't come in as expected, that would also affect how much that transfer is. Oh, right. That's, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. All right, I, was just, I didn't know if that's, again, an unusual occurrence or, uh, or what, but that's almost a double, you know, double increase there. That's why I was just curious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you okay. don't want to over transfer to the gas tax fund because once it's in there, you can't get it back. Right. If illegal, they'll, 
cause all kinds of headaches. But if you ever have extra, you could work at San Fernando Road. <laughs> <laughs> now, we um, So to be clear, Jerry, that based on past experience, the, the estimated amounts for the budget years very likely come in less than that. Uh, right, and hopefully the revenue comes in at least what we expect right. it to be. Yeah, this is another area where, you know, we're kind of engaging conservative budgeting practices. Um, so we're not taken by surprise. And the good news of that is, is, you know, we're budgeting 400K, you know, based on PACS experience, odds are it's probably going to come in less than that. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is the expense piece of it. Um, trying to think what changed in here. Um, I think we did add a little bit for, gosh, what was it? Cindy, do you recall who we added? I feel like we added a little bit for sidewalk maintenance maybe, or some additional for the, um, striping contract to make sure that we got to um, all of the components of the, the, the city within a fourth of four years. I think we've tried to do 25% per year. Okay. But Jerry, we've moved on the pages anyway from gas tax fund to public works maintenance streets. Is this a, um, when you refer to this expenditure side, um, this is a distinct fund from gas tax, right? I mean, Correct. So it is this gas tax fund here. Um, this piece of it, because it's in our operating budget, because it's um, part of where our staff is and all that is in section E of the budget. So it is our public work streets division, um, but within that division, they are funded through the gas tax money. Okay. Any other uh, questions on streets? I didn't know. Does this indicate we're painting over 20,000 linear feet of curbs every year? Or is that just what we have to, to keep to maintain? Although. I think that's what we have to maintain. Mm. It might be our annual amount because that, I mean, 20,000 feet is only four okay. miles. Yeah, We're gonna, I have yeah. a feeling that's how much we. You're right. Paint. Yeah, yeah. Right. Our curbs, our curb paint doesn't last as long. Our pavement markings, we try and do half the city each year, uh, for pavement markings. Really, I didn't yeah. know that. Hmm. Yes, that's more often than I thought. I thought that you know pavement markings had to last probably five years or something. Yeah, if you huh. can find a product that does, we're in. Interesting. Okay, so they fade a lot faster than. Uh, yeah, I realize. Gotcha. and our prices when it have gone up significantly with that because we now have to use the reflective thermoplasty paint and yeah. some of that. Speaking of, of you know, changing standards, uh, we may have already gone through this, but uh, there was a time um, where the Department of Transportation, federal, made some ruling about reflectivity on, on street signs. Yes. So not, not just talking stop signs and you know, speed limit signs, but on actual street signs and cities were going to have to spend money to replace perfectly, you know, good street signs that would normally last for 20 years or more, you know, have we gone through that? Did we have to do that? We have, I don't know that we've completed it for all of the street signs. We've certainly replaced a lot of our traffic control signs and we have started replacing some of the street signs, but yes, yeah, we got yeah. to go through all of that too. Yeah, the sign industry must have an inside lobbyist in the Department of Transportation. Like, hey, you need to write some new rules that require everybody to make to buy more. Yeah. Stuff. Okay. Okay, so we will move on to wastewater. So wastewater, as you all may recall, we went through some changes recently. We had a study done by um, Field and Associates, I think it's called, um, to look at our, our fees and all of that stuff. So in that process, 
we kind of redid how we do fees. So we used to have um, these types of fees here, this connection extension permits, and now we have um, changed that into the permits and inspection fees, and then the capacity fees, and then of course the ongoing service fee funds that are that are here. So those are what council just voted on the other night. Those go on the property tax bills for people using the service. These are more of a, a capacity kind of um, adding your capacity to the system, more of like an impact type fee. And then this is um, more permits to get your permit to get connected um, as far as inspected connecting to the main line and things like that. So I just wanted to point that out that those have kind of changed over time on um, how those flow through to the city. And you're on that page, charges for services well water, we're charging 50 to $60,000. Who do we, what well are, and who, who are we charging for well water? So this is for the uh, golf course. We um, sell, what's it called, affluent or something. So we sell them water and um, we have a revenue stream from that. Okay, so that's like purple, purple pipe water uh, from the wastewater treatment plant or, or when I say purple pipe, I mean, you know, that's yeah. like in slow, we use recycled water, you use a purple pipe to designate for, it. For all intents and purposes, yes. It actually goes into the ground and then comes back sure. out. Sure, yeah. yeah, you're pumping it out of a well, but it's it's uh, treated water. Yeah. Got it, okay, treated wastewater. Okay, and then um, on the previous page, capital under capital outlay, um, in the estimated for 2021, didn't we just the other night approve you know, a contract for total cost like three million bucks. And so I'm seeing one a capital outlay for this year estimated at one six six nine. Yeah. So this will only include expenses through June of 2021, and so that okay. project realistically won't start until July. Okay. So yeah, this is a cash based actual expenditure, not yeah, not obligations or yeah, correct contracts or something. Yeah. Okay. Question for uh, probably for Jerry on the revenue page uh, adjustment to fair market value is that because it's uh, Gasby says it's an enterprise fund and you have to mark to market or what's that down uh, at the bottom? Oh yes, this is yes marking the investments to to market value yes. And they actually and, do that for all funds. But is that, since there's no projected number there, you know, this for this year or the budget years, is that a, a number that just, you know, is determined after the fact and then plugged in? Because obviously you have no idea, because this year I assume that adjustment would be a negative. Um, well, maybe and not. It, I don't know. Rates are down. It, maybe the value's up again. But um, It really has no effect on anything because... You mark it up the night of June 30th, June 30th, and then you mark it back down the next morning. Right. Um, so it has no net effect, but it is reported in the financial statements. So uh, we include it here. Right. And I, so I understand why you don't budget for it because A, you don't know what yeah. it is and B, it doesn't have a, a real impact because you're, you're going to keep those anyway. So. Well, I, I suspect that those two years, Charles, where the interest rates were falling that they probably had why yeah. they had pretty substantial uh, adjustments to market, but we might be looking at the reverse now right. for a little while. No, more than a little while, several years. Got it. All right. Question. Anybody have any other questions? We have um, quite a Wait. bit. Of, Actually, um, I do have a question, Jerry. Um, since we've passed, uh, you know, just recently passed the, uh, um, you know, the rate increase, do the, do the revenue numbers reflect that? They do. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, and even in the 22-23, because that is kind of the plan to increase them going out, so those are included as well. Okay, good to know. Um, we have quite a bit of activity going as far as projects and purchases um, throughout wastewater. Um, 
just a lot going on. So um, it'll be a, an exciting budget cycle for um, this division. Yeah. Well, I know I say this every time I sit on this committee that your contingency amounts in some of your departments are almost absurdly low. And this is another one that's, I mean, $10,000 is a hiccup for a, a operation of that size. So you're, you're really depending on your reserves, which is just as long as everybody understands that. Um, on the um, page E12 on wastewater, E112, I should say, uh, we show, um, you know, the cost jumping around, yeah, this page, very substantially. I assume that's because of capital outlay projects, exactly. anticipated capital outlay projects. Right. And those big numbers there, the $9 million, um, you know, those would exceed the available balance of the fund. So that anticipates the, anticipates the huge project that would include debt financing? Yes. Got it. Okay. Jerry was ahead of me. He's already... I hadn't hit that page with a $10,000 contingency, but I see it here. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Anybody have any questions as we look through these pages with the more detailed expenditures? So last year we we built a combo sewer truck storage structure, huh? Is that just like a covering to hide it, put a truck under? Right. Yeah. Just to kind of protect it from the sun and the elements and all that. Oh yeah, that's important. Okay. Um, the, the contingency. I, I will ask on that one since it got brought up. What types of things is that? Would that money be spent on? I agree with Jerry, that does seem very, very low. Hardly gonna do anything. Historically, it's been, you know, to um, to repair a pump or if we need to buy some additional chemicals or, you know, kind of that line of, of thinking. If it's anything too significant, it comes back to council um, for approval. Um, there is the city manager's contingency that we do have access to that is a citywide contingency as well. So we do have a couple of, of options and sometimes they're able to kind of um, skinny up on some of their other expenses to make it through too. So we kind of try to hit all of those options. Okay, I guess that's probably more of a statement of how precise your, your budget is, is that you pretty much have everything covered. It's pretty tight, but yeah, we try to make it work. Okay. So right. I have a question for you on, on E E one eighteen franchise fees. So um, we city franchise fees paid to the city's general fund. Um, are these franchise fees collected from the sewer customer though, in addition to the sewer rate, or as part of the sewer rate? It is, it is just paid. I mean, we don't call it out separate or whatever. Okay. The sewer fund pays franchise fees just like uh, PG&E sure. or Southern California Gas because they do tear up our streets and they do use our right of way and they do all of those things. Yeah. What is that number seems in that sense in, in the franchise fee world that actually seems pretty low because I mean, typically like trash or something, the franchise fee is 10%. And here we're charging sewer fees of what, close to $3 million a year or something. And we're, if I go back here, our, our sewer fee revenue, what is that? Um, yeah, charges for services is in the, now gonna be in the range of $3 million. So 66,000 would only be 2% franchise fee. 
I I don't remember, but that sounds right. I mean, that feels right. So, okay, huh. I could look up the agreement. You're you're right. It is two percent. That's that. In the scheme of things, I imagine that that sounds fairly low to me compared to other franchise fees. So, all right, good to know. Okay, tell on costs. Anybody have, else have any other questions or can we move beyond wastewater? I think we can continue. We're ready to move, Jerry. Okay. All right, this is the community facilities district. So you'll probably recall this is the um, district that is, is citywide actually, but you annex into it. So certain um, developments more than um, four units, I believe, um, need to annex into this if they have a, um, it, um, what do you call that? If you uh, can come to council to get permission to build, then they need to, they're required to annex in. And these costs pay for the expansion and ongoing service for public works and parks. So it pays for a portion of, of police and fire, um, police officer and firefighter, and then um, a parks worker. So th that's where the revenue comes from and then it's um, allocated back to the general fund. So these um, are currently for a full levy. Um, in the current year, it's about $707. Next year, um, we expect it's gonna be $742 per unit. Um, these are, if you'll recall, we did go back to council and get a modified kind of calculator of the inflator. Um, and this is using that modified calculator with increases of 5% um, in each of the years estimated. Jerry, you know, so yeah, we take the money in and then we're transferring it to the general fund to support those additional costs. Um, we've had, see the ending of available balance was around a quarter million going down. We show it as down to nothing for 22, 23. Was that, is that deliberate? And is that, would that be anticipated practice in the future that every year we would just transfer out whatever we take in into the general fund? And, and if that's our path going forward, how did, or how or why did we have the balances in the past? Um, because we have to kind of project these in advance and um, oftentimes revenue comes in higher um, by the time we get the worksheet done and we know who's in and, and what the prices are and everything. Got it. So. so basically the plan is zero, but Right. You know, stuff happens, you end up with a balance. Sure, understand. Okay, very good. Anybody have any other questions on that? So, okay, so are we at, I feel like I'm at the end of pages, or am, that, are, am I correct? It. That is all okay. I have. You've made it through the whole budget. <laughs> okay, so I guess the only question is, um, as a result of these finance committee hearings, you know, there have been years where we've said, oh, well, gee, you know, better and let's stick a half a million dollars in a reserve here or something. Because of all of our conversations regarding funding reserves, D20, et cetera, I assume we're not really in need of having that discussion this time around. Um, I believe that's right. We worked really hard to kind of build those into what you already reviewed. Okay. All righty. And um, we, here we are, you know, in May, fiscal year ends in June. We really don't usually, usually don't have, I think you start to get an idea around September, but we really don't have definitive numbers for the fiscal year until December-ish. Um, at this point in time for the fiscal year 2021, are we, of course, this is a pandemic affected year, but I anticipate we're still gonna be uh, lower on expenses than budgeted overall in the general fund and, um, you know, I don't know how we are looking on revenue at this point in time. But, uh... um, right, so we do have some areas where expenditures are, are lower than forecasted. Um, we saw a few of those in recreation and some other places. Um, we've had very limited part-time staff, so those costs are down, of course. 
Um, and in some instances, we've had, you know, more expenses with technology and cleaning supplies, PPE and that stuff. So um, overall, I think we're probably down and I think our revenue um, looks pretty decent. We did are getting that, that um, the rest of the CARES money that we recognize, I think that's in the 250 range. Um, so we um, hopefully will come out pretty good this year as well. And do we ever get a number from the the most recently passed stimulus bill in January? We get a number out of that. I remember we were talking five million to six million, but I've you know we've had so many stimulus packages and stuff. I'm forgetting if that was from a previous package or is that the number that was. They have announced the numbers for the bigger cities, 50,000 plus. Um, they said last week that the treasury was gonna announce or um, give a worksheet or whatever this um, week for the, the lower um, population communities. I haven't seen that. I think there was something about a state calculator, but I didn't see that either. Rochelle, did you see any numbers? I, I've only seen the 5.6 originally projected um, based on the population numbers they had, but I assume that'll get adjusted. Well, that number, which is what I was recalling, the, the, you know, the five to six uh, million number, that was from the, the January packet, right? It was just an estimate. And right, it was an estimate. We still don't know what, we're, what we'll really get out of that. Cindy, did you have more information on that? Well, I checked A and um, they released uh, the populations, population numbers for the non-entitlement cities, which we are. Um, and then they released what each um, state was going to receive, but they have not released the final numbers for what each of the cities in those states will receive yet. I imagine it'll come out in the next day or two. Michael Coleman's usually on it pretty quick. Right. How does that come in because that wouldn't, you know, because we don't know what that number is, that's not really part of this budget, right? So how, when that comes along, it'll just come up as a middle of the year additional revenue, you know, with we, some options of what can be spent on? There are a lot of strings attached to that money. And so I imagine that we will have a, a study session on the discussion of that money separate and apart for this. Um, None or very little, if any, can be spent on ongoing operations or regular budget things. So uh, just doing that separate and apart from the budget seemed like the cleanest way to handle it. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, you, you mean you'd be entirely speculative if you even tried to put in a, you know, a page filler for it. But yeah. <laughs> OK. All right. Well, is there anything else that we need to discuss um, relative, you know, prior to going to full council with the uh, with the budget? Um, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the uh, process and I'll talk to council about it too. Um, we had hoped to have a report with metrics and all that stuff uh, done by the July council meeting. Realistically, that's going to be the August council meeting just in time to be able to meet with the CSTOC formally, uh, first to develop that have the council adopt this, develop that, meet with the C stock, and then get it to the council. Uh, that, that will be pushed off till August. You're referring to metrics relative to measure D, you know, revenue measure, expenditures? Yes, okay. and the report that we're gonna send out. We will include that sheet um, that you guys liked last time that talked about generally where the D20, talked about okay. the, where the D20 money will be included in the budget message. Is that correct, Jerry? Correct. Um, so that will be in the budget, so that information is out there, uh, but the, the formal report that we said we'd send out will be delayed a little bit. Okay, that's, to me, that's fine. I mean, you know, okay. All righty, uh, anything else you guys want to add or anything else, Mark, that you have any questions on or? I was just, I was getting ready to ask on, when you were asking about the stimulus money, do, what, what, do we know the estimate of when that is supposed to come in, when we, when we would receive something like that? The only thing I've heard so far is that um, we are um, supposed to receive it from the state within 60 days of them receiving it. Um, I think we're getting 
close to the time that they're supposed to receive it and it's uh, half now and then half in 12, 12 months after that. So. Oh, okay. Okay, but that's good to know, so. Right, so have all of the details of everything you could, that's qualified and not qualified. We're still working through that. Treasury has issued a lot of stuff. We've been on tons of webinars. There's still some questions outstanding and Treasury is working through some of that stuff still. Got it. Okay, that's good to know. Didn't know there would be a 12 month, um, you know, split between the payments, so. Well, hey, since we all work for the public, uh, I'm gonna give our member of the public on board here the last, Chance for last comment. Do you have anything you'd like to add or say, Jeff? Oh, now he's not making any noise. All that feedback was from his phone or whatever it is. <laughs> he's probably got probably got customers. <laughs> uh, I, no, I sorry, I must not have gotten mute. I apologize. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm good. I'm I'm pretty happy with uh, the budget stuff going forward. I'm extremely happy with how uh, it looks like we're going to spend the D20 funds and. Uh, that will keep uh, a lot of people off my back to be boisterous. So that's good. <laughs> All right, thanks. And, and Jerry Seabock, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just want to, we should recognize uh, Jerry and Cindy and their staff, but also the city manager and all the other departments. It, it's, it's an important thing they do every, every other year now, and it's not, uh, it's not easy at all. Uh, so absolutely. I nitpick from time to time, I know that, but thank you guys for working so hard at what you do. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I, I also think with the exception of the city of San Luis Obispo, this may be the most open and transparent budget process for any of the cities. Uh, you know, I, it seems like San Luis is continually having study sessions and, you know, long-term planning and everything, but. Uh, a city with a staff as small as the Tascadero to do this every other year is is uh, is a good it's a good effort and it's it's shouldn't be taken for granted. Thank you. Well, and thank you, Jerry. And and speaking of that, those um, accolades, uh, a few years ago, maybe it's four now. I I don't know. Pandemic has messed up my time frame, but we used to take you guys out to lunch after you finished all this. So I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Um, I think we're in that mode now we can do that, especially by July, right? <laughs> so, or maybe sometime after the council approves the budget or something. Uh, but Jerry, if that would work for you and your staff, I'd be happy to take you all out to lunch. That would be wonderful. I'd say thank you. We would all uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Last time we did k Pasa, but it doesn't have to be that. I mean, I, I like k Pasa, but, um, uh, but you know, whatever you, if you think about that, uh, let me know when we could get the committee together and take, uh, and then take your staff out to lunch. That'd be great. Maybe the new pie place. Oh, Ooh, there we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't okay. know. I mean, I'm a big snacker, but having pie as a main course, so I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to just say when you get the complete budget, it will have, um, it'll be pretty and, and, you know, all pulled together and there will be a section in there on graphs summaries and then the budget message that will give some more um, information. So that will all be uh, racing to pull together this weekend to get it out in the agenda package next week. All right. Okay. Well, if I think we're done, right? Does anybody have anything else? One last shot. Okay. With that, um, I think we can adjourn our, our uh, what, eighth, sixth, seventh, uh, sixth, at least <laughs> finance committee meeting. Uh, and um uh, very good. Thank you all for the hard work and thank everybody for attending and participating. So, uh, but I think we can go ahead and adjourn then. So. Yeah, all right. Thank you, thank Jerry. You. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Everybody, see you later.